So what exactly is inertia? How would you describe it? Inertia is the tendency of an object to resist changes in its state of motion. Now, if you recall, Newton's first law states that an object in motion will continue in motion and an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted on by net force. So if you have an object, it's going to remain at rest unless you try to push it. And that's just the tendency of natural things. Things tend to remain in the state of motion that they're in. So an, an object at rest wants to continue at rest. And in an object that's moving, it wants to keep moving unless it's acted on by a net force to accelerate it or friction to slow it down. So inertia is a property of an object that resists any changes to its state of motion. So if an object is at rest, inertia wants to keep it at rest. Now to illustrate the property of inertia, we're going to use two objects. The first object has a mass of 10 kilograms. And the second object has a mass of 100 kilograms. So in both cases, we're going to apply a force of 50 newtons. So which object do you think has more inertia? The object with less mass or more mass? Intuitively, you know it's the object with more mass. It's easier to move a lighter object, but it's more difficult to move a heavier object because the heavier object has more inertia. So inertia is proportional to mass. Now, based on Newton's second law, net force is the product of mass and acceleration. So the acceleration is going to be the net force divided by the mass. So for the first object, it's a force of 50 divided by a mass of 10, which will yield an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. For the second mass, it's 50 divided by 100, which will give us an acceleration of 0.5 meters per second squared. So as you can see, the small object has a very large acceleration. The large object has a small acceleration. So what this tells us is that the lighter object has less inertia because it was so easy to accelerate the object with a small amount of force. The larger object has more inertia because even though we apply the same amount of force, the acceleration of the object is a lot smaller. So whenever you increase the mass of an object, the inertia of that object will increase. So inertia is proportional to mass. It's harder to change the motion of a heavy object compared to a light object. So an object with a lot of mass, it's very difficult to get it to move. So that's the basic concept between inertia as it relates to translational motion. Now what about rotational motion? How does inertia play a role in that? So let's compare two objects. The first one is the thin hoop and the second one is a solid disk. So for the thin hoop, the mass is concentrated at the edge of the circle. And for the solid disk, the mass is distributed throughout the circle. Now let's say that the mass of the thin hoop is 10 kilograms and the mass of the solid disk is the same. So they both have the same mass. And let's say that the radius of both objects is the same. We'll say the radius is 2 meters. So which one has more inertia? Is it the thin hoop? Or is it the solid disk? What would you say? So if we took a string and attach it to each object and we applied a tension force That's the same. Let me redraw this picture. 
make sure that the angle is the same. So let's say if we applied the same tension force of 100 newtons, which one will be easier to rotate? Is it the thin hoop or the solid disc? And keep in mind the radius is the same for both objects. So which one has more inertia, or is the inertia the same? Now you might be thinking that the inertia is the same, because it has the same mass, and the radius is the same. However, the inertia is not the same, because the distribution of mass is different. It turns out that the thin hoop has more inertia than the disk, with all else being equal. The equation for the inertia of the thin hoop is mr squared. It depends on the mass and also on the radius. The inertia of the disk is the mass times r squared but multiplied by a half. So this factor, one half, is based on the distribution of mass throughout the disk. The fact that this is one is due to the fact that the mass is concentrated away from the center. So whenever the mass is away from the central axis of rotation, the inertia increase. So if you can move the mass away from the axis of rotation, you can increase the inertia of the, the thin hoop or whatever object you're dealing with. If the mass is closer to the axis of rotation, then the inertia will decrease. So the inertia of an object that can rotate depends not only on the mass of the object, but also on how that mass is distributed relative to the central axis of rotation. So looking at the thin hoop, all of the mass is concentrated away from the axis of rotation, and that's why it has a higher inertia value. With the disk, some of it is at the edge, some of it is in the middle, some of it is close to the axis of rotation, here, you have no mass at the axis of rotation, but here you have some. And so that's why the inertia of the disk is not zero, it's not one, but it's in between, it's one half. So if you can put all of the mass away from the axis of rotation, you can increase the inertia. If you put it closer towards the axis of rotation, then the inertia decreases. So the thin hoop has more inertia, which means it has more resistance to rotation. So it's going to be harder to rotate the thin hoop. The solid disc, however, because it has less inertia, it has less resistance to rotation. So it's easier to spin the solid disc, but it's harder to spin the thin hoop. So where does this equation come from? mr squared, where do we get that quantity? So this is the inertia of a thin hoop and the inertia for a solid disk is one half mr squared. And the inertia for a sphere is two fifths mr squared. So we can see that this constant in front of the term mr squared has to do with the way the mass is distributed among the object and also the shape of the object as well. So sometimes I tend to refer to that quantity as c, c for a constant. Now let's talk about how we can derive mr squared for the inertia of an object. So let's start with Newton's second law. f is equal to ma. Now let's multiply both sides by the radius, r. So on the left side, f times r is equal to the torque, the rotational equivalent of force. Just as force is a push or pull action, that can cause an object to accelerate forward or decelerate. Torque can cause an object to rotate. It can speed up while rotating or slow down while rotating. So let's think of torque as the rotational equivalent of a force. Now the acceleration is equal to the angular acceleration times the radius. So let's replace A with alpha times R. So the torque is equal to mR squared times alpha. So therefore the sum of all the torques in the system 
is the sum of all of the MR squared quantities times alpha. And just as force is equal to mass times acceleration, torque is equal to inertia times alpha. So torque is the rotational equivalent of force. Alpha is the rotational equivalent of A. A is the linear acceleration. Alpha is the angular acceleration. Now M, the mass, provides inertia to an object. As you increase the mass, the resistance of the object increases in the sense that it's harder to move a heavy object than a lighter object. So this is the inertia of an object with reference to translational motion. This quantity is rotational inertia. It's the resistance of an object. It's the object's resistance to rotational motion. So therefore, we could say that inertia is the sum of mr squared. And so that's how you can relate inertia to this equation using this process. So this equation that we have here, it's associated with Newton's second law for rotational motion, whereas this is Newton's second law for translational motion or linear motion.